Hello Legends. In this video, I'm going to speak about the new Replit connectors. So to get to the connector section, just go into your integrations tab, scroll down a little bit, and then you see this new section over here, which is called Replit connectors. So Replit connectors are an easy way for you to plug in different tools and services into your Replit account. Uh, previously, if you wanted to integrate one of these uh, tools into your app or automation, you'd have to go off, you'd have to create an API key and then plug it into that specific project. In this case, if you want to plug in something like Gmail, you can just click on this button over here, which says sign in. We then have a pop-up that just explains what's going to be happening. So we're connecting Gmail to Replit. Let's click on continue to Gmail. I'm going to click on my Gmail account. And now I just need to give Replit access to all these different permissions. Super easy. Let's click on continue. And there we go. Now the connection was made. So this means that I can actually access my Gmail account from any app or automation that I want to build out. So one of the benefits of connectors is that after you establish that first connection, so like I've got GitHub and YouTube and Gmail plugged into my Replit account, these connections are actually account wide. So if I ever want to bring in a new app and I want to make a, uh, an auto backup of all of my NAN workflows, then the agent's going to go across to my connectors tab, see that I've got GitHub connected and bring in that connection into the actual app. And then same if I want to plug in a uh, like a YouTube dashboard, which is what I've made previously with this agent, the agent's going to go across to the connectors tab, see I've got YouTube already authenticated and then be able to bring in all of my different data points. And now that we've got Gmail, same thing happens over here. The agent can see that I've got Gmail connected and it's going to be able to bring that credential back into the app. So this is pretty cool because previously, every time you created a new project in Replit, you'd actually have to go off and create a new API key. So let's say you wanted to build multiple apps that had a Gmail connection. So for each project, you'd have to create a separate API key. So over time, you might have three, four or five projects using multiple different API keys. So this actually was a bunch of unnecessary overhead. So this is actually a very big win for connectors. Now, the final point that I want to make is that we saw that for me to connect my Gmail account into Replit, I just had to click the sign in button and then my account was authorized which is literally this process over here. I want to plug in Gmail. I just click sign in. I allow the permissions into Replit and then the connections established. So the old process for connecting any of the Google services like Gmail, Sheets, Google Docs, you'd actually have to go into Google Admin, create an app, create some new credentials, define some scopes, and then authorize that connection with your app or service. So I actually want to go off and try building something with uh, some Google connections. I have an idea of an invoice processor that I want to create. But before I do that, let's just connect our Google Drive. So let's go to sign in. Okay, let's approve this connection. So continue to Google Drive. I'm going to choose my Google account. And I've already connected this before. So my permissions are already pre-established. I'm just going to click on continue. And now I have my Google Drive connected. Once again, super easy. And now for Google Sheets, the exact same thing. So I'm going to sign in. Let's choose accept the connection. Uh, sorry, choose our account now. There we go. And then continue with the connection. So I already established my Google Sheets before. So that's why I didn't have to choose my permissions. But typically, if it's your first time, you'll have to choose those permissions. So now this is really easy. I've got my Google Sheets and Google Drive connected. Let's go across to create a new app with the agent. All right. And let me paste in my pre-written prompt. So to explain what I want built out today, I'm going to get Replit agent to build out an invoice processing tool for me. I want the agent to build out a nice front end where I can come in with an invoice. I can drop it into the web page. And then the uh, automation is going to take that invoice. It's going to bring it across into Google Drive to actually store that for myself for later. And at the same time, it's actually going to parse that invoice and it's going to pull out all the key details and then save it across in a Google Sheet for me. So I've already created a Google Drive folder for this. So I've got a new dash invoices section where I want the agent to upload all the invoices. And then I have this process dash invoices Google Sheet where the agent's going to be uploading all the extracted details from that specific invoice. And those are the instructions that I've given to Replit agent. So I'm asking the agent to build me an app that has a responsive web page where users can come in and drop a new invoice in PNG format. So they can just take a photo of the invoice and then upload it into this web page. I then want to use OpenAI to extract the details from that invoice. I've just given some specific line items that I want, like invoice number, invoice date, invoice total. And then I'm explaining that I want to take that extracted information and then put it into this Google Sheet, which is this Google Sheet over here. So in our case, I'm just going to take a screenshot of the layout of this Google Sheet and also attach it as context for the agent. And then once again, I've just given the URL for that specific sheet. And then scrolling down a little bit, I've also mentioned it's called Sheet 1, which is this reference over here for Sheet 1. And now I'm going to choose Web App. And uh, in my experience, I actually found that if I'm slightly more 
specific with the information at the very start of the project that the agent does a better job at actually building out what I want to build out, which is why I already pre-built those uh, folders, the Google Sheet, I've taken those screenshots, I've given the direct access to the URLs, just to make it as easy as possible for the agent to be as successful as possible. So now we have the agent building out our initial plan. So the plan is complete. Let's have a look at what the agent's done over here. So we have, um, yep, I'll help you create an invoice processing web application. Let me check the uh, necessary integrations. The agents had a look for those integrations. Okay, cool. So the integrations that are listed, we have uh, App Storage, OpenAI, Google Drive, and Google Sheet. So those are both the connections that we've authenticated just before. And here's our plan. So responsive drag and drop file upload interface for PNG invoices with visual feedback. I like that. OpenAI Vision API to extract the invoice data. And this is the stuff that we listed from those PNG images. Really cool. Google Drive integration to automatically upload those process invoices to our specified folder. That's exactly what I wanted. Uh, Google Sheets integration to add the extracted invoice data to this spreadsheet uh, with proper column mapping. Really cool. We want a clean professional UI with upload progress indicators and success and error notifications and invoice processing status display showing extraction results before saving to Google Sheets. I actually like that. So I'm not going to go and change any of the plans. And in this case, let's start with a design first and let's click start designing. So uh, typically I actually like to start with design first. I think in this case, you could have gone to either way. You could have actually just said build the out build out the entire app. Whenever possible, I like to just stage things out. If I go across and I say, give me the actual design first, I can very easily see if there's like a section that I, I don't want at all, which means that I'll just reduce the scope for the agent, um, which helps the agent just focus on the most important stuff. Now from my last Replit video, uh, there's actually been some updates to the agent section. And I just wanna speak about this while the agent is building out that initial design. So uh, over here, if you just click on this configuration section in the chat window, you can see there's a bunch of different autonomy levels. So app testing, which I spoke about in my last video, is just a way that you can test, or that the agent can actually test the app. So we're gonna see on a left-hand side panel, later when the agents build out the primary functionality, it's gonna go across to the app, it's gonna get that like browser control environment and be able to see like, click the buttons, type in some text and actually test the app to make sure it works. And if it doesn't, it gives the feedback to another agent that's able to change the code. So I like to leave this on because it makes my job a lot easier. And then you have these different autonomy levels. So if I go to low, the agent is uh, given permission to generate and execute on tasks from the task list. So across in the agent tab over here, there is a task list typically. Okay, so I think in a little while we're going to see a task list and it'll be like stuck to the very top of this chat pane and it'll be like task one and then like what it's up to. Um, and it might have like five tasks, for example. So as it goes through each task, it just says task one, task two, task three. So that's what this first setting does is gives it access to those task lists. Uh, if you go to medium, then you have reviews, latest code changes and fixes issues found. So this is complementary to the app testing. I like to leave my setting on either medium or high. Oh, okay, one second. So over here, we're connecting to Google Sheet. I see that you have the Google Sheet connection active on your account. Would you like to use this connection? Yes, sure thing. Please use that connection. So like I mentioned earlier in the video, since we actually authenticated Google Sheets and Google Drive uh, before we started building the app, since we brought a project into our app, we were able to see, oh, Bart's already got the Sheets integration or the Google Drive integration. And the agent's just doing a nice you know, due diligence saying, do you want to actually use those credentials that you had? And I'm like, yeah, sure. So I'm going to go back to explaining these different configuration settings for the agent. But let me first go across and get an API key from OpenAI. Okay, so let's create a new API key. I'm going to call this Replit3. Uh, and choose my general project and create secret key. Let's copy this and hit done. And now let's paste it into here and click on continue. And yes, I also want to connect to Google Drive. So let's just give the agent a little bit of time. Okay, there we go to generate our preview. And then I'm going to confirm if I want to keep going with the functionality, but I actually really want to do this first stage and get it correct. Okay, so we have a 404 page not found. Let's see if the agent's able to pick this up. Oh, okay, I think it's because um, now I have all the integration set up. Let me start building the front end prototype by first updating the HTML title and creating the core components. Now let me create the core components for the invoice processing. Okay, so I think we have the 404 uh, because the agent was waiting for us to give the, uh, the go ahead to use our Google Drive and Google Sheets account. So let's give the agent a couple more minutes just to build out the actual interface and then we'll come back to the preview. All right, so it looks like we are restarting the application after some changes. 
there we go. So now we have our uh, front end prototype ready. Let me just see what else the agent is working on. Okay, so the agents made some of those checkpoints. So how do you like the design and functionality of the invoice processor? The app shows drag and drop file upload, processing steps with AI extraction, and a clean data display. So let's have a look. Uh, invoice processor, day and night mode, upload PNG invoices to automatically extract the data. Uh, okay, so this is actually very clean and simple. I've gone off to a chat GPT conversation. I've just asked for it to generate me a sample PNG invoice. And I've just dropped that invoice directly into the invoice processor. Now let's see over here. It extracted the invoice number, September 29th, 2024. Tax is 104-129.99. Okay, so this seems to be dummy data because the actual invoice we had was just for a keyboard and mouse over here, which makes sense because we haven't built out the actual functionality yet. So now I'm just going to say build out functionality because I like how uh, all this stuff looks. And here we have the agent starting the next phase of the project. So I can see your invoice processor prototype is working beautifully. The design looks clean and professional with excellent user experience flow. Now let's build out the real functionality to make this a fully working application. So now the agent's going back to the actual requirements that we set up initially. So like I mentioned a little bit earlier in this video, here's all the actual task list of what the agent's going to be working on incrementally. So this task list was uh, this stuff over here. So it generates and executes on a task list. And that was if I set it to low. Um, then if I set it to medium, like we mentioned before, it reviews the latest code updates and then it fixes any issues that it finds. And in our case, we've got it set to high currently. So it expands review scope to the entire app. So that just means that when it actually tries to find any issues and just make sure the app is working well, it'll actually look at the entire app, not just the section that it's built out. And now the max mode would actually increase the capability of the agent uh, and give it permission to plan and complete new work independently. So if you click on max, you actually get a notification where uh, the main addition that you have now for the agent, the main capability that you get is that the agent can do uh, much more autonomous development on its own. So up to 200 minutes with minimal supervision. Replit does warn that this is still in beta mode. So it might run into some issues and it is gonna use up some more of your tokens. Um, if you wanna use this, just click on I understand and enable max autonomy. For now, I find either medium or high is actually enough for me. For this specific app and the previous apps that I built out, I've just left it on high and the agent's been working really well. Now let's actually come back into this chat pane and see the status of what the agent is doing. So, uh, so far we have three of the six tasks completed. Set up the invoice data rules, get invoice details from images, save files uh, and data to Google. So this is going to be into the Google Drive. And now we're working on create ways to handle invoices. So let's close this uh, task list. Let's try and find our most recent checkpoint and just see, okay, here we are. So now the agent is uh, connecting the OpenAI service integration. So we're going to be using OpenAI to actually read the PNG image and extract all those details that we need to plug into our Google Sheets. And the agent's going away and installing some additional packages and different things that we need for the app. So I'm going to give the agent a few more minutes to just go off and complete some of these updates. And when it comes back to me with some questions or uh, a new checkpoint, I'll tap us back in and speak about what's going on. Okay, so we have our next checkpoint. So along the way, the agent's given us the opportunity to actually publish the app to make it accessible by anyone on our team. But before I publish it, I just want to give it a test. So the agent's saying that the invoice processor is now fully functional. It connects to OpenAI for data extraction, uploads file to the Google Drive folder, and adds the extracted data to your Google Sheet. So let's actually test it again. I've just given the uh, same invoice from before. Okay, and we have some error over here. So error uh, processing this. I'm just going to take a screenshot of this entire page. Let's give it to the agent. There seems to be an error. I uploaded an invoice and had this error. Okay, so let's send it into the agent and see what we can get back. Okay, so it looks like the agent was able to figure out what happened. Apparently the invoice file that I gave, the chat GPT generated invoice was just a little bit too big. I think the app was currently expecting 100 kilobytes, but my invoice was actually 2.2 meg. So the agent has updated the limit to be 50 megabytes. So let's test this again and see if it works. Okay, here we go. So we're uploading uh, Google Sheets update, add extracted data to the Google Sheet. So this is actually working pretty quickly. I mean, I just uploaded the invoice. Uh, interested to see how this goes. Okay, so processing was complete. Extracted invoice data, uh, invoice 10001, 81.38 invoice total. And over here we had 8138 total, 638 tax. 
Uh, keyboard 50 bucks, mouse 25. And that's right, keyboard 50, mouse 25. Oh, wow, look, and across in Google Sheet, we had uh, the invoice ID, so invoice number 10001 from this date, 8138, 638 tax. And then we had perfect description was keyboard quantity one for 50 bucks and mouse quantity one for 25 bucks. So this is actually really cool because we had to concate both of those line items into one single cell in Google Sheet. And uh, it looks like Repla Agent has actually maintained all the different metadata. So like it was a keyboard, the quantity, the price across both products. So that's really, really neat. And then over in our new invoices tab, looks like the invoice was uploaded as well. And yep, that's the original invoice that we had. Okay, so I have to say that this process was actually really easy. I'm surprised that it was able to handle this invoice on first go. The only issue we had was that the initial setting was to handle invoices of 100 kilobytes, but you know, people take a photo of the invoice on their iPhone or something, it might be a couple of megs. So after we increase the file size, which is just a one minute fix, then the actual uh, invoice processing tool worked. So this is, yeah, this is extraordinary. So now a final step for me would be to actually publish this app and make it live for all of my team to use. Um, before publishing, some best practice would be to actually add some kind of authentication to this app so that not anyone could just access it. So if you actually just want to see what else is possible, you can go into this tools and files section and you can come down and you see this auth connection over here. So this would let users log into your Repla app by using a pre-built login page. So we could just go across to the agent and just say, hey, before we publish this app, like, hey, it's working fine. Really like what you've done to this. Um, all the connections are working perfectly. Uh, would you be able to um, add some user authentication to this just so we can add some more privacy and security to the app? And once that would be done, you can go across and publish this. So I'm just going to go to publish. Now, I could have gone to the agent and just said, hey, can you publish this for me? But this is just easy enough for me to do by myself. I'm going to keep this URL and I'm just going to go and click on publish. And Replit's now published our app. It looks like the agent's actually gone off and made some final configuration adjustments to the actual app after the publishing was made. So best practice would be now before you actually make this live to everyone in your team, just go across to this URL and just test it again by uploading the invoice. So everything should work, but when you had it within Replit, it was testing environment. And this is, yeah, just best practice when you're publishing things and trying to make them live. So I've given the exact same invoices before. That's been uploaded. The data extraction was uh, lightning quick. Looks like it was added to the Google Drive. Nice, so processing was complete. I really like this little message. Looks like the data was the same as before. Keyboard 50 bucks, mouse is 25, 8138 and 638. The new line was added over here. The exact same details. And then we had that next file added as well. So at this stage, you can go off and push this out to your team. And one final thing that I want to check is just how much it cost us to build this out. So the app is called Invoice Pilot. And I've just gone across to my usage section. I've gone across to my agent usage tab. And I can see the app over here, Invoice Pilot. Looks like the total cost was $3.41. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I would definitely watch this space. Replit's going to be introducing more and more connectors. And if there is an integration that you want, you can just request it over here. All right, thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next one.